Good Saturday evening, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. We have, again, a quiet, for the most part, evening across the area. We do still have, again, the potential for some more thunderstorms across the Mid-South, and yes, that may include the possibility of some strong to severe weather. You may see some brief, heavy downpours. You may see some small hail. Doesn't look like the atmosphere is charged up and ready to go for anything like tornadoes, but once again, we will be watching that throughout the course of the rest of the evening, so definitely want to keep it tuned to News Channel 3 for any updates on that should they become necessary from the National Weather Service. Again, we've had no severe weather across the Mid-South so far today, and again, that's definitely good news. Some of you have reported some fairly heavy amounts of rain or downpours out there. If you have pictures or videos of that, we would love to see them. Drop them into the comments section, email them to us, post them on our Facebook page, send them to us on Twitter. We'd love to be able to see them and show everybody else about what's going on out there. But remember, do so safely. Do not risk your life for a piece of video or a picture out there. So again, please use lots of caution and common sense just to be on the safe side. Drop your locations out there. Again, let us know where you're checking in from, whether it's in the Mid-South or points beyond. Let's see where everybody's at and give us a little bit more where it comes to weather. Speaking of what's going on in your area, basically, temperature, wind speed, got any pictures out there? We'll take a look at some sunset shots in a minute. Beautiful sunset going on out there. If you've got a good view of it, we'll talk about that in a little bit as well. Can't stick around for the whole thing we're doing here tonight for weather overtime forecast in the red bar beneath you also over here on our seven day forecast and all available right here at wrhg.com slash weather what do i do with my remote okay can't go anywhere without this thing here's what it looks like over the next several hours rain chances may drop off and the temperatures might a little bit but most of what we're going to see over the next about 12 hours is going to be only about lower 70s into and around the rest of the Mid-South area. So overnight, again, not seeing a lot of chances of showers and thunderstorms. We may start to see them pick back up again into tomorrow morning around daybreak, mainly looking at mostly cloudy skies, warm and muggy conditions overnight, not really seeing much of anything else in the way of major changes coming on through. What we have is, again, very typical weather for this time of the year, not really seeing too much of anything else uh, into and around the area. Welcome to everybody who's checking in, waving hello, thumbs up, or just stopping by to show your locations out there. Northwest Alabama, cloudy and thunder. Chris Chastain, hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, New Albany, storms all around the area, but not here. Rebecca Stanford Mayo, welcome to the show. Amit Prabhu, Hope I'm saying that correctly. When are rains expected? That depends on your location. And again, just about anybody could stand a chance of rain showers in and around the Mid-South area for right now. And Betty Levingston pouring in Senatobia. Thank you very much uh, for checking in there for right now. Kenneth Scott McNair hauling 15,000 pounds to Cookville, Tennessee tomorrow. Uh, winds not bad. We'll take a look at those coming up here in just a little bit. And welcome to everybody else for checking on through. Here's what it looks like out there. Showers and sunset around South Haven tonight from the Baptist DeSoto camera around I-55 looking back to the northwest before some more clouds moved on through. A few speckles of rain coming down around South Haven for right now. Beautiful sunset tonight. Again, a few thunderstorms trying to get going out there back across the river into eastern Arkansas. The view from our Hilton East Memphis camera looking back toward the towers of Poplar and Mendenhall and some beautiful sunset colors out there tonight. Seriously, if you haven't had a chance, go outside and take a look at some of those colors out there tonight. Beautiful night for sunsets. And if you have a chance to snap a picture, let us know. And we drop the uh, address into your uh, comment section there so you can see a little bit more about what's going on. Also, into and around the area of Ole Miss, looking at a little bit more cloud cover, had just a bit more sunlight just a few minutes ago. But unfortunately, it looks like the clouds are taking over as nighttime starts to move on through. But otherwise, not seeing a great deal out there. Right around the area of South Haven. And I guess our touch screen is not working here. Let's go ahead and move this back up a little farther. South Haven around the Walls area getting a few thunderstorms developed. These storms again have been doing the same thing. Pulse thunderstorms is what we call them or even uh, popcorn thunderstorms if you want to call them that more of a nickname than anything else. They develop, they drift, they collapse, they start all over again. 
and that's exactly what we're seeing here from Olive Branch to South Haven, Horn Lake, Walls, north of Hernando. Notice how far the lightning strikes are going away from these parent thunderstorms. So again, remember, if you can see lightning or hear thunder, you are within range of getting struck by lightning. So again, please use caution and common sense to make certain everybody stays safe out across the area. Let's take a wider look here and see what's going on. West Tennessee, not that much happening at this time. Northeast Arkansas, likewise, not a lot going on. A few thunderstorms back outside the viewing area, including a little bit more activity back to around Forest City and also a little bit more activity right now dwindling as it heads a little bit closer to around I-55 and northwest Mississippi at this point in time but that's about the heaviest that we've got at this point so again not and have not seen anything in the way of severe weather so good news on that few more potent thunderstorms between Blytheville and down toward the I-55 I-555 split showing a few more areas of activity there and a dwindling thunderstorm right on the western edge of the news channel three viewing area between Goodwin and Morrow drifting its way to the west and it looks like kind of falling apart not as much lightning as there was so we'll continue to see again these thunderstorms out across much of the area for about the next maybe hour or two if they manage to hold together and if they do Again, I would not be surprised to hear a rumble of thunder, but so far the atmosphere is just really not set up for anything involving major severe weather, and that's good news as well. Uh, when thunder roars, go indoors. Betty Levingston, yes, very good from the National Weather Service. Might seem like a silly catchphrase, but if it saves people's lives, I'm all for it. So thank you very much uh, for reminding us of that and everybody else who's checking in for this evening. Still got to talk about heat indexes even after the sun's gone down. Feels like 93 in Carothersville, Missouri with 84 degrees degrees right now, mid to upper 70s, and with all that humidity out there, it's going to be decently sultry across the Mid-South. High of 87 today, just above the average, low of 71, also just above the average. Now, officially, we did not pick up any rainfall about until about 3 to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. We might have picked up some after that, so if that's the case, that number will change into tomorrow when that's tallied up by the National Weather Service. But for right now, we're showing goose eggs where it comes to rainfall, which in and of itself is not that much of a problem because we are just about nine inches above normal for the entire year. So no problem at all for 2018 where it comes to rainfall. Okay, for tonight, running the numbers, again, very much on the warm and muggy side as we head into and around the area of uh, very early tomorrow morning, right at and just after daybreak. Low temperatures will only be back into around the lower to mid 70s at this point in time, and that's going to be about as much as we get uh, into and around the Mid-South area. Scott Jarvis, 73, cloudy, calm winds in Banner, Mississippi. Grady Bennett, 81 degrees in Bartlett, partly cloudy with lightning to the south around Mississippi. Thank you very much. Uh, for that one at this point in time. Uh, Kenneth Scott McNair, you're hauling 15,000 pounds to Cookville, Tennessee. How will the winds be tomorrow? Uh, the winds at this point in time are kind of just very light. Notice the moving lines on screen here, the arrows. That's the winds. And right now, there's not a lot of them out there, maybe about 5 to 10 miles per hour. And for the most part, it looks like it's going to be mainly out of the south-southeast but we're just not seeing a lot of breeze out there. There's not a lot of wind to really drive these storms one direction or the other. So they're just kind of ambling on through. They're not really in a hurry to go anyplace, and this is what we wind up with. We just have these thunderstorms. One goes west-southwest. The other one goes east-northeast. The other one goes the opposite direction. They just sort of wander on through depending on which direction the winds are blowing in the lower atmosphere, and they're not really giving us a lot of gusty conditions out there. So if you're traveling again like Mr. McNair with 15 15,000 pounds to Cookville. I don't think you're going to have a lot to worry about in the area of lots of wind. At least that's the way it looks here in this area for right now. Uh, Sue Lowry at AutoZone Park. Not raining yet. Very good. Cloudy in Eads, Tennessee. Jeff Livingston. Thank you very much on that one. Uh, we're going to get rain in Atoka. Judy Watkins Evans. Depends on that. Again, these are going to be very localized showers and thunderstorms. You may get something in Atoka, not get anything in Munford. You might get something in Millington, in the city, and not get anything at the naval base. That's how localized these things are, kind of randomly haphazard scattered across the Mid-South. And we'll continue to see that throughout the rest of the day tomorrow. Should be seeing highs around 90 degrees again, and those heat indexes could be a bit of a problem as well. Now, severe threat 
for tonight and into early tomorrow. Generic thunderstorms only. We are not seeing anything in the way of severe weather at this point. Heading into Monday, a threat of severe weather starts to make its way into Florida and the deep south, and that's because of Alberto. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. And that threat spreads a little farther to the northwest as we go into around late Monday into early Tuesday. So there is going to be a chance of some more severe weather coming on through as we get into around midweek, possibly. We'll be watching that very carefully. We'll talk about that forecast in just a little while and show you what's going on. Larry Ratliff, man, it will never stop. Geez, well, hang on. We're reaching those summer doldrums because usually about June, July, August, September, there comes some very dry times out there. So we'll see what goes on, depending on what happens with tropical storm season, Natch. As we go through tomorrow, temperatures again pushing 90 degrees. Isolated chances of showers and thunderstorms coming up. We're not seeing a great deal of them, but they will still be possible. So again, if you can see lightning or hear thunder back indoors again, let's all be careful out there. Same thing for Memorial Day. Very warm, very sultry, very good chances of showers and thunderstorms off and on, mainly in the afternoon and evening, but so far not seeing a great deal. Now, here's where things start to get interesting. As we go toward the middle of the week, Tuesday and following into around midweek Wednesday, possibly Thursday, depending on the path of this thing, if Alberto curves a little bit more toward Florida and heads over toward the East Coast states, we may see a reduction in the amount of chances of showers and thunderstorms. But if this thing curves a little bit farther back to the northwest and approaches the mid-south from the Gulf Coast, we could see a great deal more showers and thunderstorms coming on through by midweek. So if you have any outdoor plans right now, it doesn't really look all that bad. But again, into the next several days, it really depends on what Alberto does. We'll talk about that coming up again in just a moment. Temperatures, again, as Alberto moves out, it could drag down a lot of drier air. As we get rid of the thunderstorms, we start seeing some drier conditions. So that means more sunshine, and that means we're going to be seeing a lot more in the way of heat. So mid-90s coming our way for temperatures, lower to mid-70s for lows. That's it, and that's all for cool, so to speak, temperatures into the area and that, again, gives us some very nice conditions out there. If you have to be working or exercising outdoors, that may be a much different story. Alberto winds just barely tropical storm strength at this time. About 24 hours ago, it was thought that this may become a hurricane before landfall. It doesn't look like it for right now, but it still has a long way to go between here and the Gulf Coast. And again, it's already shoveling a ton of rainfall. Tropical storm warnings are up, and uh, what are called storm surge warnings are in effect for some parts of the Gulf Coast states and right on down into and around Florida. But as of right now, tropical storm warnings have been posted for much of the Gulf Coast, New Orleans, Mobile back over into the Florida Panhandle and down into portions of Tampa St. Pete and just north of Fort Myers. A lot of people head to the Gulf at this time of the year for the start of summer vacation. A lot of you going down that direction in the next couple of days. Please be advised that as this storm system heads up this way and evacuation orders get issued, you may have to turn right back around again to get out of that flow of people going away from the Gulf Coast. We could be looking at 12 inches plus of rainfall. We could be looking at storm surge at high tide, maybe giving some more problems to the Gulf Coast with all that water coming on shore. So this could be a mess you don't want to get stuck in. So if you're still planning on going this direction, that's great, but again, please pay attention to the forecast, especially to the National Hurricane Center, so we can keep you updated on this. Okay, now timing things out as we go into the course of the next couple of days. What is going to be, again, appears to be just a tropical storm, is going to be making its way through about the eastern part of the Gulf Coast. By tomorrow afternoon, it'll be just basically almost due south of Pensacola and starting to make what appears to be sort of a northwesterly turn heading a little bit closer to the Gulf Coast. And again, by about Monday morning, we could be looking at landfall around Mobile, Orange Beach, back toward Pensacola, Dauphin Island, somewhere in there. We could be looking at uh, lots of winds out that direction. And again, this is where the storm increases to around 65 miles per hour. So this is just going to be shy of hurricane strength if this forecast holds true. Now we go even farther into the future. And what's left of this thing makes its way onshore as a tropical depression. And by the time we get into around 
uh, Tuesday morning, Tuesday afternoon, we could be looking at some very breezy winds out there. This is still going to have winds of nearly tropical storm strength of about 35 miles per hour plus. So as this makes its way up through the Tennessee River Valley, the winds around this thing may be stirring things up, including bringing more rainfall in and giving us the possibility of some fairly choppy driving conditions across the Mid-South. Now, this right here, the red line, is the most likely path. It could go anywhere in this cone zone right here. It could veer over farther into Alabama, nearly over to Georgia, or the path could wander almost right over the Mid-South and go into eastern Arkansas. So this is just the potential area of where this storm may wander. So this is why, again, you need to pay attention to these forecasts in here and what we're going to be seeing for the possibility of this activity moving into the Mid-South by the time we hit about Tuesday or so. And that's where we get a lot more chances of rainfall out there for right now. Uh, Marsha Henderson, what time is the rain coming through tomorrow? Off and on throughout the rest of the afternoon and right on into the evening, pretty much like what we had today for the most part. Again, that's what we'll be looking at for tomorrow. Uh, Ernest Holton, when it gets hot enough, we will be wishing for rain. That is very true on that. Tanya Ford, welcome from Cherokee Village. Uh, thanks a lot for dropping on by for tonight and Kill Michael, Mississippi. Hope I'm saying that right. From Carolyn Holmes. Thank you uh, very much. Burt Bishop from Bolivar. Thank you very much. And Vosburg, Susan Coley, storming. Okay, thank you very much on that. Thanks to Arkansas SEC 73 for a nice little turbulent view of the clouds from Branson, Missouri from earlier this week. Thank you very much for that one. Wes A. Wright, a nice view of the storms last week around the Lakeland area, some pouring rainfall, looking out the front of the truck window and looking again at a pretty heavy downpour there, and a foggy start to Saturday, thanks to Fred Style 88 for a nice view of the Ole Miss campus and in and around Oxford for today, getting a little bit more in the way of fog more than anything else early this morning. And thanks to everybody for sending in those pictures. If you got sunset pictures from tonight, bring them on. We'd love to see them. Again, send them to me. Email them at austin.onic at wreg.com or got numerous other ways that you can send information to us on various social media networks. So please pass them on to us. Aonic WREG3 on Instagram and on Facebook, Austin Onic WREG, one word there. And again, we'd love to see more about your pictures. Uh, in and around the Mid-South. Miss J, don't play. Welcome from Red Banks, Mississippi. Thanks for stopping by. Kathy Ledbetter Dixon from New Albany, Mississippi. Thank you very much. And Betty Levingston, you're quite welcome. Thank you very much uh, for tuning in for tonight. We'll have an update on the forecast again coming up tonight on News Channel 3 at 10. We'll also take a look and see if there's any change in the track of Alberto. And we'll also have another look at that forecast coming up bright and early tomorrow morning. Stay tuned for another edition of Weather Overtime coming up just past 8.30 in just about 10 minutes. And we'll take another look at the tropics to see if there's an updated forecast. And we'll also see a little bit more about what's going on with, again, weather where the troops are. If you have friends or loved ones stationed around the world on this Memorial Day holiday weekend, we'll take a look at our little salute to everybody who's wearing the uniform here in the Mid-South and all around the world so you can see a little bit more about what the weather's like in various locations out there. If you have friends or loved ones serving in the United States military, just like I do, so stay tuned for more on that. That'll be on my Facebook page coming up in just just about 10 minutes. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Thanks for joining us, and stay tuned for a lot more throughout the rest of the holiday weekend with News Channel 3 on air and online.